What's up y'all, Hater here, and I wanted to make a video on a new Hunter build that combines some of the best from Hunters and Titans into one singular build. Obviously that means it'll be a showcase of Prismatic, utilizing one of the new exotic class items with dual perks. I've got some footage in the background rolling to show just exactly what this build can do in an ad dense environment, or even something as simple as running and gunning through just about anything, from regular on-level activities to more difficult content like GMs and raids. You can see that the build has a bit of everything and there's a lot going on, so much so that even with the new UI update, it's oftentimes hard to keep track of the amount of buffs I have at any given point in time. With this build, I've got near permanent uptime on restoration, volatile rounds, radiant, invisibility, and slowing and freezing. Not to mention, I supplement it with Devour, courtesy of my weapon selection, and Void Over Shields and additional sources of Weaken from the seasonal mods to add another source of both survivability and enemy debuffs and difficult content. If that wasn't enough, you'll also constantly charge both your light and dark transcendent energy, allowing you to transcend as often as possible to further bolster your ability spam. First and foremost, let's talk about one of the main components of the build, the exotic class item for the hunter, Relativism. If you didn't know, these exotic class items can drop with two armor perks from two different exotic armor pieces. The one that I'm using in this build has Spirit of the Drift Falcon and Spirit of Inmost Light. Now these perks are essentially watered down versions of their originals, both reducing the benefits that you see from them while also removing certain components. Spirit of Inmost Light, for example, while using an ability, it empowers the other two abilities, granting them improved energy regeneration. So you lose that on the damage buff from the original Heart of Inmost Light, but you get the improved energy regen. With Spirit of the Drift Falcon, your Void Weapons gain volatile rounds after you emerge from being invisible. This pairs incredibly well with one of the aspects that I'll be showcasing in the build breakdown. First and foremost, your Super of Choice is pretty much up to you. What I like to run, because it pairs with some of the fragments, is Golden Gun. Obviously, this will allow you to do some damage with your Super, while benefiting from being radiant and also benefiting from applying darkness debuffs with the build. For abilities, I almost always go with Gambler's Dodge to refund the melee ability. I don't really find that I need Marksman's Dodge unless I'm in a DPS phase against a boss in a raid or in a GM. And Acrobat's Dodge is pretty much useless since you're going to be radiant 100% of the time anyways. Your jump is always shooter's choice. I'm a fan of triple jump. Now here's where the build can kind of split two different ways. A lot of people are advocates for a combination blow because of the high damage you can deal with your melees while also going invis from the aspect stylish executioner and restoring some of your health when you defeat an enemy with your melee but with this build you're gonna want withering blade because of the fact that it applies that slow debuff which you'll benefit more from with this build additionally since you'll be playing into the ability regen from spirit of inmost light you don't need the back and forth refresh that combination blow and gambler's dodge can give you it's a waste at that point since the only ability you'd be boosting the recharge rate of is your grenade then onto the grenade, I like the Arc Bolt grenade here, mainly because I can use it to jolt big groups of enemies and also stun overload champions. If you wanted to, you could change that out for something like the Dust Field grenade, which will also stun overload champions and additionally apply more darkness debuffs when it slows targets. But I personally like the Arc Bolt grenade just because it is a light ability and I already have a dark ability that I'm going to be spamming with Withering Blade. Onto the aspects, Stylish Executioner is pretty much a no-brainer here, especially with your Falcons. Defeating a target affected by any elemental debuff grants invisibility and true sight. So those elemental debuffs are everything from Scorch to Slow, Jolt, Volatile, anything like that. You're going to constantly be going in and out of invisibility and constantly reapplying Volatile rounds to your Void weapons. Additionally, after performing a Stylish Execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens targets. So, your Withering Blade can also apply that 15% weakened debuff when coming out of invisibility. For the second aspect, you'll want Winter Shroud, which states, dodging slows nearby targets. So again, applying a Darkness debuff, which affords you another opportunity to go invis and apply weaken. So you can see how the back and forth between dodging, throwing your melees, constantly applying both light and dark debuffs, will play into the Falcon side of this build. Onto the fragments, first and foremost, we have Facet of Protection, which is there essentially just to give you extra damage resistance when you're surrounded. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier by picking a different super. I choose to run Golden Gun, so when I pick up an Orb of Power, I get three seconds of restoration. If you were to change to Arc, for say, you'd be Amplified when you pick up an Orb. Or on Stasis, you'd get Frost Armor. Strand, you'd get Woven Mail. And Void, you'd get an Overshield. Something to take note of if you do decide to change your super. Next, Facet of Defy. Alliance. 
Finishers create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, slows, severs, or makes targets volatile based on the damage type of your equipped super. This fragment is there to kind of supplement what you lose by not using the actual Jerfalcon's Hallberg. So by finishing an enemy, you'll spread that scorch, and by defeating those targets, again, go invisible, reproc volatile rounds, so on and so forth. Next, Facet of Courage. Your arc, solar, and void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuffs. You're going to reap the most benefits from this by hitting a target with your withering blade or dodging near them and then throwing your arc bolt grenade allowing you to do extra damage with your grenade or if you're using your golden gun for damage dodging near that target or hitting them with a withering blade and then shooting your golden gun essentially you're just debuffing a target before you use your light abilities and lastly facet of dominance I like this one just because it allows my arc grenades to jolt targets what this does is one gives me a tool to stun overload champions and two, any enemies that are jolted and then defeated will again send me invis thanks to Spirit of Drifalcon. So you can see how the fragments and the exotic class item and the armor perks on it all kind of tie in together into this intricate loop of applying darkness debuffs, using your light abilities, and constantly cycling everything to make it work. These are the mods that I'm currently running on this build, and I'll have the dim link in the description of the video down below. But the main takeaway from the mods is the orb generation, which will allow you to keep your restoration and radiant up. So depending on what type of weapons you're using, at a minimum, you should throw on a siphon to match. Heavy-handed, in the event that your withering blades defeat a target, you'll generate an orb. And I personally almost always run Reaper, just because the amount of times I'm going to be dodging on Hunter, I'll constantly be creating orbs every time I defeat a target after dodging. As far as the seasonal mods go, there's a couple that kind of boost this build through the roof. Void Hegemony is going to be your first one. While you have a Void or Prismatic subclass equipped, defeating weakened targets provides a small overshield. So when you come out of invis, throw your Withering Blade, weaken a target, and then defeat that target, you'll go invis and get a Void Overshield. Radiant Orbs, pretty self-explanatory. Pick up an Orb of Power, get Radiant, that's it. Shield Crush, while you have Woven Mail, Frost Armor, or a Void Overshield, your melee recharges faster and deals increased damage. So as you weaken targets and defeat them, you'll get that Overshield and have increased melee damage and increased recharge on your melee ability. And while you're Radiant, your grenade recharges faster and deals increased damage. So you can think of it kind of as the trade-off of not having the damage boost from Heart of Inmost Light. You'll still be boosting your ability damage by keeping things like your Void Overshield and your Radiant Timer up. Last and most importantly, your Void Sources deal increased damage to weakened targets. So this is where you're going to want to use Void Weapons with a build that also play into the Spirit of Falcon and using Void Weapons with Volatile Rounds. Lastly, as far as weapons go, obviously you're going to want to use Void Weapons when you're dealing the brunt of your damage. So Void Heavy Weapons like Falling Guillotine, Commemoration, things like that are going to be huge when dealing damage to champions or bosses. Additionally, running a Void Energy Weapon so you have another source of Volatile. I'm a huge fan of Buried Bloodline this season just because you're going to constantly weaken targets and if you're getting kills with it, you're also getting Devour, which is just another source of healing. I've even dug the Rasarago out of my vault and started using it. And in the top slot, I'd recommend either a Riptide or Deliverance with Chill Clip just so you can apply additional slow stacks or freeze targets that you already hit with your withering blade now as a titan main myself i'm kind of bummed to see that we're sharing heart of inmost light with the other classes but i also really enjoyed your falcons whenever i play hunter so the fact that i can combine the two now with this exotic class item and this build means i'll probably be playing a little bit more hunter because i'm not gonna lie this build is an insane amount of fun it's got great ad clear great survivability it does good damage and all around it's just fun to use so if you're chasing exotic class items, definitely go for this one and give this build a try. You will not be disappointed. That's it for today's video. If you like the build, make sure you drop a like on the video. And if you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I'll be putting out some more builds over the next couple of weeks as I continue to farm these class items and try out new builds. So you can even hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when these videos go live. That's it for me. I'm done. I'm out and I'll see you on the next one.